But to some degree, this is going to touch everybody's life. And what I didn't realize is when I got going on it, how much it would touch my heart and how much it would touch my own heart. And hopefully it doesn't become too preachy because I'm going to start preaching to myself. So if it does, you know, I guess that it is what it is at that point. The topic of speech is all over the scripture. It's all over the Bible. Particularly in Proverbs, there's a lot of stuff in Proverbs. Solomon gets on it over and over. Of foolish words, foolish people, and how to use the words. And what I've got going is not necessarily an exhaustive research here or exhaustive sermon on everything that there is to do with speech, but there's a plenty enough that what I do have for us to consider how we talk and how we communicate with other people. And with it being a topic that we've all heard something about this, even if it's the old, if I don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. But with that, it's not always a bad thing to have a reminder. So going into James, James says, but no man can tame the tongue. It is restless. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise the Lord our Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. And out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. My brothers, this should not be. And that's our dilemma. To do the best that we can to control our mouths, to control our tongues and what we say. In Titus, it says, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility towards all men. And some translations will say to speak no evil. And that's not just that's not as easy as just, okay, I read this, I read the scripture, I read this verse, I know that I'm not supposed to slander, I'm not supposed to talk evil about people or evil to people. But it's a lot harder than just, okay, I know the verse, and this is what I'm supposed to do. It's in our nature when somebody comes at us, when somebody's rude to us, when somebody's snippy, we get a verbal attack of any sort, we tend to give back what we're given. Somebody gets rude with us, we get rude with them. And sometimes that can escalate. And we have to watch not to attack when being attacked. James says, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Proverbs again says, a fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. To completely just when somebody gets something started, to just let it all out. Everybody's going to know I'm angry. Everybody's going to know I'm upset. And that is a fool that gives vent to their anger. Part of that is a lot of times we're in situations where, as Christians, we may be the only ones who are really concerned about keeping our mouths under control, trying to save our, that testimony, that we don't damage our testimony with our words just because somebody else is coming at us or somebody else is attacking us. But we have to keep a hold of that same verse that there is life and death in our words. And it's not always just what we say, how we say it, our tone, body language all factor into this as well. You can say the sweetest thing, but your tone can still set off, set off a fight. Now an article from the Women and Children's Health Network states that small children can feel or they can sense anger. And as a result, children can become fearful. <coughs> Verbal abuse, which is pain calling, demeaning language, causes hopelessness, helplessness, a feeling of inferiority, causes anxiety, low self-esteem, a lack of confidence, and can cause depression. 
And this is also true uh, in adults. It can cause the same emotional issues. Critical and angry words damage and scar. Especially when they come from someone who should be trusted. Someone that we would feel loves us. Which is a parent or a spouse or some other close family member. In a 2015 study by the CDC, it says that one out of every three teens has been verbally abused or bullied in one way or another, whether it's face-to-face, -face, but usually by texting or some form of social media. Of that number, 14% of these kids have considered suicide. And of that, another 7% have actually attempted suicide. And it goes to the old saying, sticks and stones, it really doesn't ring true with this. We see in the news often how kids 12, 13 years old killing themselves over something embarrassing that happened and they just get the landslide of people on social media that they can't handle. Dr. Andrew Newberg says that positive words alter the expression of the genes, strengthening the frontal lobes, promoting cognitive function, and propel motivational centers of the brain. You just think between the two, rather than somebody being critical of somebody or making fun of somebody, to actually give positive words. The difference that it makes to cause somebody to want to commit suicide is something that causes them to and motivates them helps them to be healthier. Moving beyond that, we go back into Proverbs again. It says, without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. And as charcoal to embers, as wood to fire, so quarrelsome man for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels and they go down into a man's innermost parts. Now, gossip just by itself, as a definition, is casual, unconstrained conversation or reports about other people typically involving details that are not confirmed to be true. And I had a pastor at one time, and he would say, don't tell me anything negative about anyone, especially if I have never met this person before. I don't want my opinion of this person to be changed by stories, by opinions, and hearsay. If we hear something negative about somebody, whether we know them or not, especially if we don't know them, when we do see them, we already have the mark for what type of person they are, who they are, without giving them a chance to prove the type of person that they are. James teaches us to bridle our tongues because they are full of poison. Paul teaches us about our everyday speech, just how we talk and converse daily. And he says in Ephesians 4, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That may benefit those who listen. Paul will also mention in Colossians, about filthy language, cussing, cursing, profanity, whatever title you want to put on it. I have known people that could cuss like they breathe. Just a constant flow of profanity. I've worked with people like this, and it's based on anger. The only reason that somebody's going to use profanity in the first place is because some form of anger. And if somebody's cussing, continuously cursing, because they have some, some level of anger in them. And we'll touch on that again later. But as much as profanity is based on anger, so much as sarcasm or being passive aggressive, these things try to put others down by saying, I'm smarter than you. If someone's condescending, same category. I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. These things are veiled anger. 
can also be based on pride. Just putting yourself above somebody else. Ephesians 5 says, Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Now, as I was going through this, I came to this point, and I've been going through quite a few scriptures and some commentaries and things like that. And right about this time, I'm ready to take a vow of silence. You know what the monks are saying? Like, you know, I'm not going to say anything. I can't get anything out of my mouth without falling into one of these categories here, and I'm just trying to just not say anything. But when I found a commentary by Warren Worsley, he says that foolish talk does not mean innocent human, but senseless conversation that does not edify or minister grace. And the jesting translates into the phrase, able to turn easily. So that's taking a simple statement and turning it into a coarse joke or an innuendo or something that might be inappropriate or thing. Scripture doesn't say that we can't laugh, it doesn't say that we can't have humor, but we need to be careful about the direction that it takes because it can easily or quickly get out of hand and quickly go too far. Now Proverbs 18 says a fool's lips bring him strife and his mouth invites a beating. I'm not advocating anything here but if anybody gets into trouble as they're being arrested for beating somebody you can cite Proverbs 18 might help you out a little while. some of the teachings of, of Solomon, just a few of them. We've seen what Paul and what James have to say about our conversation and how we talk. Now to what Jesus has to say about this. Jesus says in Matthew 12, the good man brings good things out of the good that is stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil that is stored up in him. But I tell you, that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus is telling us that what is in us, what is in our hearts, comes out in our words. What we say, our intent when we say things, this is going to come out as we speak what is in our hearts. Worsby says, the sin of the tongue is the sin of the heart. And we will be acquitted or condemned by our words. Our speech tells the world who we are. Our speech tells the world what's in our hearts. Are we negative? Are we angry? Do we look for the worst in things? Do we tear tear people down, we always want to have that negative pull on everything, stirring, stirring up trouble, making fun of people, or do we speak life? Are we building people up? Are we being constructive? If we have criticism, is that a construct, constructive criticism? Do we speak with love? Do we look for the good in people rather than whatever's negative? negative? Now, years ago, I would have given the choice, I would have said, well, these people are just too happy. I can't be around people that are that happy all the time. And the older I get, the negativity, the anger, is just exhausting. To be around somebody that's always negative. To be around somebody who can't find the good in anything. They're the ones that when you say, I want a million dollar lot, they're going to say, you're going to have to pay $300,000 in taxes. Give me my money. Give me my wins. <laughs> Don't tell me about the bad part about it. I'm happy with the 700000 
<laughs> so I'm all over that and take it. Just let me be happy for that moment. Instead of kicking me in the shin when something good happens. I would rather be around now. As I get older, I would much rather be around somebody that's up, up be someplace that's looking for the good. It's much easier to be around. Not making fun of people, not tearing people down. And I know it's very hard to control what we say sometimes, especially when we're in a work situation and we really can't control what we're around. But part of controlling what comes out of us is what's going in. The garbage in, garbage out. And it would be real easy to go off on a rant right now on the TV, the movies, music, negative people that you end up being around. There's just so many things that are just wearing on us. If you took a TV sensor from the 50s or 60s and let them watch anything on TV now, they'd probably pass out. <laughs> I don't even know if they have sensors on TV anymore. So, eh, go ahead, whatever you want. And these things, this is what we see. You turn on the TV, you're going to get something like this. Any type of show you kind of get, they're trying to weasel it in on you. They're trying to desensitize us to all these things. And it just wears and it wears. The movies are worse than the TV show. The music. Now, being around, I used to listen, well, I used to listen to a lot of really heavy, dark music. And being teaching guitar for 25 some years, from what I've watched as an evolution of music and what the kids bring in. It used to be aggressive music with some lyrics. And then the next few years, you'd have to get somebody that was a more aggressive music and the lyrics now are more aggressive. And it was just this over and over and over again to where it's just this really dark, angry music that people were bringing into. Where the people are just this, the, the vocals are more or less just screaming. I actually had a kid bring me in a video on, they actually call it growling, growl scream. And they teach you how to do that, how you push from your gut, and you hold the mic the right way, and it gives you a slow thing. And when I listen to this, I was like, ah, I'm not that angry anymore. I've tried to listen <laughs> to some of the music that I used to listen to when I was a kid. It's like, wow, I can't get through this. I'm just not that angry anymore. And I usually keep it under control pretty well. But this kid brought something, and it was just this growling, screaming, just Bleh in your face and I, I actually laugh. I know a well this kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this guy is so angry and he's so serious about what he's angry about. It's just, it's, well, it's sad and it's, it's amusing at the same time. It's like, boy, somebody had a bad afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just, that anger just grows on itself and it grows on itself and it just gets larger and like gets bigger and bigger and it just spills out where it's just like screaming. That's how our lives go. We let ourselves be around negative people. We let ourselves be around the TV, the movies, all of these things that just are battling against the Spirit of God, battling about against what is righteous. And if we allow this into our lives, even with the best intentions, this wears and wears. If you see this, this is what comes in, and this is what comes back out. We need to remember the words of Jesus. What comes in and what's going to come back out. What is in our hearts is going to come out in our intent, in our words, in our speech. And by that, we will be condemned. Or we will be acquitted. Let's pray. Father, as we come into this time of communion, we ask you to Touch our hearts. Help us to consider the words that we use every day when we're talking to our family, when we're talking to our children, talking to people at work, in the store, anywhere we go. Help us to consider the words that we use, our intent, our tone, that we might glorify you, that we might build people up, not tear them down, that our words would be powerful and that they would speak. Father, we all have problems with us. We all have issues with us. Help us. Forgive us. Forgive us the strength to humble ourselves and move in the direction of Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.